Hi, I'm Scott Humphrey, CEO of the World Floor Covering Association, and this is Leadership Live. Thank you for joining me again. This week's letter in Leadership by the Letter is the letter H, and the word is hero. Now, when you hear the word hero, I'm not sure what comes to mind. Maybe you see someone wearing a cape and carrying a shield, but the definition of hero reads as this, a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. A person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. In other words, a hero is not the norm. This is somebody who does what others do not do. Maybe you think of Sully, who landed the plane on the Hudson River. Maybe you think of those brave firefighters and policemen who charged up the towers during 9-11, or the soldiers who defend our country. All heroes. But what about, what about you? I don't know, maybe you you think of a song. You know, Bonnie Tyler had a famous song in Footloose called Holding Out for a Hero. It says, I need a hero. I'm holding on for a hero till the end of the night. He's got to be strong and he's got to be fast and he's got to be fresh from the fight. Maybe that's what you think about. But the reality is a hero is not defined by the masses. A hero is defined by you. When somebody does something that impacts you and your performance and ultimately your life, then to you, they become a hero. Sean Bradley, who heads up my Vistage group, shared a story with us. He, he recently competed in a half marathon over in Hawaii. And about two thirds of the way through, he got disoriented on uh, which direction he was supposed to go. So he asked a young man, turned out to be a student from the University of Hawaii who had already finished the race. And he said, listen, am I going the right direction? And the young man said, yes. Sean said he was struggling. You know, you often hit a wall at some point during a half marathon or a marathon. And Sean was hitting that wall. So Sean said, thank you, and then headed in that direction. And the young man came alongside him. He said, hey, listen, would you mind if I finished the race with you? And Sean's like, yeah, but listen, I'm struggling a little bit. It's going to be a while. You don't have to do that. He said, no, I really want to. I can assure you that to Sean that day, that young man was a hero. Maybe the story of Ray Blankenship will help you better understand. Ray lived in Andover, Ohio. They had multiple days of rain, heavy rain. And Ray is standing at his kitchen window one day, early in the morning, just after breakfast, kind of cleaning off the dishes. And he looks outside in the ditch, which is swollen to its capacity. And he sees something go by in the ditch. He's not really sure what it is, but then he realizes it, those look like arms and legs. And he thinks it might have been a child. Now, he could have written that off and said, now forget it. But Ray actually jumped out ran alongside the ditch, realized it was a young girl from a couple of houses up who had gotten swept away in this rain-swollen ditch. He also realized that not far down, that ditch emptied into a raging culvert. And if she got in that culvert, it would empty into a larger body of water, and she was gone. So he starts running along the side of the ditch until he thinks he can jump in front of her. He jumps in with all he's got into this deep, raging water, and he grabs her, and then he begins to grab around trying to find something that he can secure himself with and secure her. About three feet before they got to the culvert, he felt a log or a stick. He didn't even really know. He just grabbed for it, and he was able to grab it and hold on. And he's thinking, man, if I could just hold on until the firefighters get here, we're going to be okay. But Ray did better than that. By the time the firefighters got there, Ray had actually lifted her out of the water and managed to pull himself up too. For that award in 1989, he received the the silver medal from the Coast Guard for his heroism. And it's very appropriate if you think about it because uh, Ray could not swim. But Ray wasn't thinking about his safety because heroes, they focus out. They're looking for the needs of others. Ray jumped into that culvert because somebody needed his help and it was the right thing to do. Man, I'm telling you, if there's ever a time that leadership needs to become heroic, it is today. It's time for us to look inside ourselves and find something because somebody is looking to you that needs a hero. Think about this acrostic when you think of hero. Helping everyone reach their optimum. Helping everyone reach their optimum. You as a leader have the opportunity to invest in your people, not simply employ them. What are you doing to help them reach their max, to be their best? I want to challenge you as you go through this week. Do things differently. Focus on being someone's hero, everyone's hero, because every time a person stands in front of you, you have the opportunity to have an impact. 
positive, negative, or neutral. Make sure yours is positive. Another hero song, one that I like and I often use it when I work out, was one that Mariah Carey sang. And this is what that song says in its chorus. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong. And you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. Every week when you invest in yourself by being a part of this podcast, you say you want to be more. You want to go against the stream. You don't want to be the norm. You want to be one of those people who everyone looks to for leadership. Hero, helping everyone reach their optimum. That's what I want to challenge you to do this week. And you can. And I believe you will. Now go out there and lead.